HD Wave has a number of new features. This is the lightest and most compact inverter that SolarEdge has ever manufactured. It has a record 99% CC weighted efficiency, enables longer strings, and ships with integrated rapid shutdown. So let's take a look at what we find in the box. In the box, you'll see an inverter, a pre-installed DC safety switch, a mounting bracket kit, a mounting template, the installation manual, and an activation card. Don't throw the card away because you'll need it later when installing the inverter. Turn the DC safety switch to the off position. Take off the cover. There are two locations for conduit entry, the side and the bottom. We recommend using the bottom for all outdoor installations. Now we're going to mount the inverter. The inverter ships with a mounting bracket and template. The inverter only weighs 25 pounds, so a single person can install it. Lift on the bottom or sides of the inverter above the DC safety switch. So you guys just hung the new Solar Edge HD Wave Inverter, the SE3800H. So tell me what you thought. It's not something that I do every day, but it was very simple. I didn't think hanging an inverter on the wall was possible by yourself, but the new HD Wave makes it really easy. Now that we've hung the inverter, let's connect the AC power. Connect the line one, line two, and neutral wires. Strip 5 sixteenths of an inch of insulation from the wire ends. Solar Edge uses spring compression terminal blocks. Using a flat blade screwdriver, insert the screwdriver here, and then insert the wires here. Remove the screwdriver and the wires clamped. Check for a loose connection with a tug test. Connect the DC wires to the inverter. You can connect up to two strings in parallel to the terminal blocks on the 3.8 kilowatt inverters. Strip 5 16 inches of insulation from the wires. Connect the DC equipment grounding conductor to the equipment grounding terminal block in the safety switch. Check your safe DC voltage before connecting the DC positive and the DC negative wires. Each optimizer that is connected to a PV module will output only one volt at this stage. On this installation, we have 14 modules connected in series, so we should see something around 14 volts. Also, check your polarity. Connect the DC positive and DC negative wires to the terminal blocks. Insert a flat blade screwdriver here. Insert the wires here. Remove the screwdriver and the wire has become clamped. Check for loose connections with a tug test. We recommend taking a photo of the connections at this point in time. So now that we've finished our DC connections and our AC connections, it's time to set up uh, the data cable for this inverter. Uh, we're gonna run the Cat5 cable through the DC safety switch into the inverter, plug one end of the Cat5 cable here and the other end in the homeowner's router or switch. You have a maximum distance of 330 feet. Okay, and, and this is different routing it through the DC safety switch now. What would be an advantage of doing that? Oh, right, yeah. So right now, if you use the cable gland that we provide, it's great, but if you decide not to use the cable gland and run conduit, you get a more aesthetic look. Okay, so you're getting a cleaner installation overall. Yes. Nice. For ethernet, route the cable through the lower portion of the DC safety switch, and then up into the lower portion of the inverter. Open the communication gland. Remove the rubber fitting from the gland and insert the CAT5 cable through the gland and through the gland opening of the inverter. Insert the cable through the opening in the DC safety switch towards the communication board. Connect the ethernet connector to the RJ45 port on the communication board. Connect the other side of the CAT5 cable or ethernet cable to the homeowner's router or switch. Close the DC safety switch cover. Now that our wiring is done, we can activate the inverter. For this, we will need the activation card found in the accessories bag. Don't throw this card away, you will need it to activate the system. Notice how the activation card does not fit with the logo facing out. You need to insert the card with the logo facing in the other direction in order to activate the inverter. And remember, listen for the click. If you lose the card, you can use the recovery code on the inverter label here. Turn the AC breaker on. The inverter LCD will show running script and done. The inverter does have AC power at this point, 
so be sure to not touch any uninsulated wires or metal components. Close the inverter cover from the bottom first and then covering the top. Notice this little tab. This tab is inserted into the inverter cover. Then tighten the screws. Do not push the inverter cover straight on. You should see the grid voltage at VAC. This should be around 240 volts. The safe DC voltage is going to read the maximum number of optimizers per string. In our installation, we have 14. The PAC is zero. This is your instantaneous output power. After pairing, the inverter will export power. Make sure that you have completed all safety steps and that your AC breaker is in the on position. Your safety switch is also in the on position and the inverter on off switch is in the off position. To pair the power optimizers to the inverter, start by pressing the OK button for 10 seconds. The following message will be displayed. Keep holding for five seconds until the following message is displayed. After the 180 second countdown has been completed, the inverter will confirm the number of optimizers. After pairing, the inverter will monitor the grid. After the wake up cycle is complete, the inverter will produce power. Now we will show you how to navigate the inverter settings using the four button touch panel interface. Escape works like a back function. This goes to the previous menu and cancels a value change with a long touch. OK selects a menu option and accepts a value change with a long touch. You can also scroll through the various display screens using the up and down arrows. Return to the home screen at any time with the escape button. On the home screen, you might see a VDC number. This is your fixed voltage number, and it reads about 380 volts. This is higher than your standard SolarEdge fixed voltage, and that's to enable even longer string lengths. On the SE3800H, the string length is almost 10% longer than on our standard SolarEdge inverter. We recommend that you take a photo of the LCD screen at this point. You can see that we are now producing power and that the inverter has detected all 14 power optimizers. If the connections are working, you should now see SOK on the main menu screen. If you don't see SOK, use the down arrow and scroll to the communication menu. All ones indicate that the communication has been set up. The first one tells me that the connection at the communication board is successful. The eighth one tells me we have successfully talked to the SolarEdge servers. At this point in the installation, you might not have PTO or permission to operate, but that's okay, because with this inverter, you can now set it into standby mode. What standby mode enables you to do is to prevent the inverter from exporting power, but turn it back on again remotely from the monitoring portal. And this can save you valuable truck rolls during your residential to scroll through the menu options, use the down arrow and go to the maintenance menu. Go to standby mode. Select enable to enable remote commissioning. Once you have received PTO, you can remote commission the inverter. Log in to the monitoring portal. Choose logical layout. Right click on the inverter and choose operation. Select exit standby mode. If you need to power down the inverter, make sure you follow the correct procedure. First, turn the on off switch to the off position. Let the voltage drop below 50 volts. You will be notified on the following screen prompts. After the voltage is dropped, turn the DC safety switch to the off position. Thanks for joining us today and stay tuned for more how-to videos from SolarEdge.